Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well, this is Chetan here from Design Palette and I am back again today with another video. In this video we are going to be taking a look at the features released for Adobe XD September update. We've got the most awesome and one of the highest requested features for Adobe XD along with a couple of small cool features brought in this update. So I'm going to show off the small ones and I'm going to keep the cool awesome ones for the end of the video. So without any further ado, let's get started. Alright, so before we get started, just want to quickly mention that I am building my newsletter following. Once I get a good following, I'll be sending out design resources uh, in my newsletters, videos, tutorials, inspirations, and some cool products for designers and stuff like that. So really appreciate it if you subscribe. It'll be the first link in the description. Right, so let's get started. So the first one is spell check. So if I go here to my menu and I can see uh, this option which says turn spell check off, so which means spell check is automatically turned on. So if you want to turn it off, you can click on it and it becomes a uh, spell check turn on. So let's check it on. All right, so I've got some text over here. It's a paragraph text. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the word below and let's see what happens when I type in the wrong spelling. So I'm going to type in B E L O and I'm going to spend space bar. And what that automatically does it, I'm going to get this kind of a red mark. A red underline which showing that this is a wrong spelling of course uh, just as any way you would do it but when you click away it goes away so when you click back in it pops up so uh, that's a cool feature it also recognizes grammatical errors so you're gonna end up seeing a green underline all right so the next thing is viewing full screen on for web prototypes so what that means is for example I go and set the width of this to 2560 uh, uh, 2560 by 1440 uh, which is a pretty big uh, canvas which is bigger than the size of my screen which is 1920 by 1080 so uh, basically what I'm trying to do is create a canvas that is bigger than the size of my screen and I'm just gonna quickly set this to uh, 1440 All right um, let's just go and create something very simple uh, so let's actually set this color to probably a, a red color and then I'm gonna add in a circle in the center and we're gonna set this color to uh, probably some color like this and center it, all right? Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go and choose publish prototype. And now that the link has been created, I'm just gonna click on this to open up in the browser. All right, so this is the prototype on the web. And uh, as you can see, it when I go ahead and click on the full screen mode, what it's gonna do, it's gonna fit the entire composition, even though it's 2560 by 1440, it's gonna shrink that down to 1920 and put that on the screen. Now, if you if you had used the old version, what would have happened is this would have actually been 2560, so you would have seen a scroll bar at the bottom as well to scroll to the left and right side, but right now it's gonna squish everything and put it on this. Uh, the reason you can see a scroll bar over here is because the height of the project is bigger than my sc so my screen. So here the size of the uh, document is actually 1440 by, but my height of my screen is only 1080. So uh, what I'm trying to say is if I shrink this down, minimize it and I scale it, you see that it automatically kind of responds, uh, kind of uh, resizes itself to fit everything into the screen and I won't get any scroll bars over here. So very easy to view. If I want to shrink it even more, I can shrink it. I can reduce the size of this and yeah, so that's pretty much um, what it does. All right, coming to our second last feature, which is really amazing, is timed interactions. So this is just a project that I worked on for my portfolio. Uh, I designed, redesigned the TubeBuddy app, for those of you who know the app. So um, I cleaned up the user interface, changed the font, and I made it look much cleaner. Um, you know, these are all the screens that I have, all right? Uh, a pretty, pretty nice project. Uh, if you want to check out the project, you can quickly go to my profile and you can click on the TubeBuddy redesign and uh, you know, you can check out, it's kind of like a UI UX case study where I showcase what the project is about and showcase the different screens. Uh, so, you know, definitely take a look if you guys are interested, but uh, let's go into this quickly. So let's go into the prototype mode and what I can do is I can select one of the uh, screens and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and move over to this uh, artboard. And now as you can see, the trigger is set to tap and I have an option to set it to time. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what tap does and I'm gonna show you what time does. And, and then we have 
the action which is a transition or an overlay. Uh, if you are, if you don't know the feature of overlays in Adobe XD, I recommend checking out my previous video, uh, which was the previous update where they released overlays. Uh, so definitely check that out. And this is the destination, which is basically which artboard I'm going to transition to. This is the animation. Uh, we uh, let me bring down, come down a little bit here, and then we have easing and the duration and uh, yeah. So. Let's quickly see what that does. If I go and choose the play button, uh, I just have to tap and it's gonna fade into my new screen. Okay, so now let's see what happens when I go ahead and choose uh, time, all right? So when I click on time, what that means is it's gonna be like a slideshow, like a PowerPoint or a keynote presentation where the screens display themselves one after the other. So I don't have to go in and tap every time. It's gonna play on its own kind of like a video so uh, what i can do is i can set the delay over here the time delay is basically the time for which uh the second art the new artboard shows so if i set this to two seconds that means um uh, if i just go ahead and uh, just click away so what i'm going to quickly do is uh, i'm just going to go select the artboards and i'm going to go ahead and then uh, just drag them onto the next artboard and as you can see the delay here it automatically takes the settings from the previous one and we can take this and drag this on as you can see it's two seconds and we can and then we can and then we can uh, select this and let's move over here quickly uh, just just uh, prototype a couple of artboards and uh, I think yeah that's good so now let's play and see what happens so I'm just going to click on desktop preview and uh, as you can see after every two seconds it automatically goes and shifts to the next screen uh, which is very 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 awesome uh, you can change the delay you can change the transition whatever you want it to be and it's automatically going to uh, do that for for you all right now one other cool thing that i want to mention is for example during the process of the transition you want it to you want to go ahead and tap on something and kind of control the uh, animation uh, the transition of the prototype from there so what i'm trying to say is for example i have the search icon now the next artboard is actually this one but let's say i want to move to this artboard by tapping this i can come over here and then just prototype this and it's going to be a tap trigger i will not have the option to set the trigger as time because it's all this artboard has already been prototyped to this artboard uh, with a time trigger all right so uh what i'm trying to say now is let's play this and see what happens so one two change one two it's going to change and one two uh, it's going to change again all right now let's play this again and this time when i'm going to go and it's going to come to the next screen i'm going to click on this search and it's automatically going to take me to the search page it's going to skip this page and as you can see let's do that once again uh, let's bring this over here okay i'm going to click on search and once i click on search it's automatically going to start replaying uh, the other artboards that it was attached to so it's really helpful in some situations. For example, you're doing an onboarding process uh, for a mobile app and then you want to skip the onboarding animation. You can just click on the skip button and it's gonna skip the entire onboarding animation. So that's a really cool way of using this feature. All right, guys, we are here finally at the best and the most awesome feature that is released in this update, which is responsive resize. So let me tell you what this is all about. This is just a simple project. Again, I worked on uh, for my portfolio. If you want, you can check out the presentation over here. It's for Vanguard Esports. Uh, I did a pretty cool, nice looking presentation with wireframes and my project and the user personas and the stuff like that. Uh, pretty cool and interesting. So let's just uh, close this quickly and get back over here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this news page. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this news page and I'm going to go and actually uh, drag this down over here so we can just focus on this. All right. Now, let's say I'm designing this for a tablet view. So quickly, I'm just going to get my artboard and I'm going to go and get myself a uh, iPad Pro 12.9 inches. All right. And there we go. Now, I would have to resize all this to fit the size of the so what I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to go ahead and to demonstrate this. I'm just going to go and create a nice artboard, which is a, let's see, uh, iPad, iPad Pro, whatever it is, doesn't matter. And what I'm going to do is, as you can see, I have uh, four objects over here. Let me just uh, quickly make them, make these into groups. So this is going to be one group and this is going to be another group and this is going to be another group and this is going to be another group. So we have four different uh, groups over here. What I'll do is I'm going to select these four and copy this and bring them over here, paste it. As you can see, these are pretty big and I want to kind of uh, reduce the size of this. So let's turn up responsive resize. And when I shrink this down, uh, you can see what's happening. 
the text, the image, and the button over here, it's all getting skewed and you know, losing its proportion. So I'm gonna control Z that, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on responsive resize this time. So for example, if I go ahead and just uh, ungroup this and get rid of these two, and I have only this, and let's say I wanna increase the size of this. Now with responsive resize turned off, what I can do is if I can just move this over like this, uh, we can see that this text and this button kind of skews itself. Uh, as you can see, the text shrinks when we reduce it and when we extend it, the text becomes bigger. So that's not what we are looking for. So if I go ahead and, you know, turn on responsive resize this time, make sure we are on the auto mode and I go ahead and increase the size of this. You can see that the text stays in place and you know when I shrink it, it kind of responds neatly. And uh, let's go ahead and make this pretty big. So let's take a look. So when we select this and we go to the manual mode this time, so I've selected both the artboards over here, go to the manual mode. I have two options, fixed width and the fixed height. So let me just uncheck the fixed width. So which means I can now increase the width. Right, pretty cool. Uh, if I turn on fixed width, I won't be able to change it because the width is gonna be fixed. All right, as you can see, it doesn't uh, allow me to do anything like that. So what I've done is I've created two artboards which are basically the exact same thing. So let's go ahead and select this Fortnite option. And in the manual mode, I have unchecked this fixed top position. And here on this one, I've turned on the fixed top position. And now let's see what happens when we scale these down. So I'm gonna select this one and I'm gonna hold down shift and select this one. And I'm gonna shrink these down of the same size. As you can see over here, the word Fortnite kind of overlaps the text Vanguard. And over here, the Fortnite does not overlap the text Vanguard. Now, obviously because of the size of the font, we have some issues over here. I am telling Adobe XD not to fit its position to the top of the element. Let's take a look and measure the size over here. So let's just create a quick rectangle. As you can see, the distance between the top and the bottom is approximately 24 pixels. And let's come over here and uh, take a look at how much the difference is. So we can see that the difference is pretty big. So it comes up to uh, uh, around uh, 45 pixels. Now the reason it's 45 pixels is if I control Z and show you what I'm trying to say. Let's go back to the top over here and I'm gonna go and grab this and uh, create a scene. As you can see, the distance is 45. So basically what I'm telling Adobe XT is take this element fix it to the top, which means don't change the size, don't change the distance between this top part and this text. Fix the element to the top part. But here, since I have unchecked the option, XD is automatically allowing the text to fit freely, move around to make it look responsive. But on this one over here, the text Fortnite, I've unchecked the fixed top part, which means that this text is not gonna be fixed and when I resize, it's gonna harmoniously resize itself with the other elements to make it look responsive. So that's pretty much it about responsive reasons and I hope you guys really like this feature and hope you liked today's video. If you, have, if you have any questions or requests, let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more awesome content and I'll definitely see you guys in my next video. So take care and bye-bye.